Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it's afternoon for me, Arsh, but I'm guessing it's still morning for most of you. So, good morning. My name is Sukrut Khandekar. Please call me Sukrut to all, even Suk for that matter. That's what all my friends and family call me anyway. My preferred pronouns are he and him. So, to tell you a bit about myself, I am from Mumbai, India. But due to the pandemic, I am currently staying with my grandparents in Delhi. I really hope you and your family members are doing fine in these tumultuous times. I, along with George, will serve as your co-mediators for this session. George, if you could please introduce yourself to the parties. Good morning, everyone. My name is George Medina. I'm originally from the United States, but I currently attend King's College London. Um, and I am very happy to be co-mediating uh, with uh, Sukru today. I'll pass it on to him so he can explain the rules of the media, uh, excuse me, explain the mediation to you all. Thank you so much, George. Now, may I please request all the parties present at the table uh, to kindly introduce themselves, tell us how we should address them, and maybe specify certain personal pronouns that we need to keep in mind. Also, it would be great if you could also confirm your authority to make decisions and representations. So maybe start with the requesting party, uh, Jahula Park's company first, if that's okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Regina Pato, and I am the chairwoman of JPC, and I have full and authorized authority to settle here in this mediation today. And I am here accompanied by my counsel, Raisa. Hello, everyone. My name is Raisa Panto, and you may address me by my first name, Raisa. And I'm here as a counsel on behalf of my client, Regina, and the company, Jahula Parks Company. Hello, everyone. My name is Oli Olsen, and I am here. I am the managing director of Future Green um, Technology Company. Uh, my preferred pronouns are she and her. I would like to confirm that I have full authority to make, um, to enter into an agreement on behalf of FGT. I'm here with my counsel, Lisa Collins. Hi, everyone, and thanks, Oli. My name is Lisa Collins, everyone. You can address me as Lisa. My preferred pronouns are she and her, and I'm here today as counsel of the Future Green Technology Company, FGT. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. So to start off, I'd like to extend my heartiest appreciation for both the parties for coming to mediation, especially during this tired COVID-19 pandemic. I would also like to thank both the parties for entrusting George and I with the responsibility of facilitating the resolution of this dispute today. I understand that some of you might have been to a mediation session before, but just to ensure that all of us are on an equal footing here, I would just quickly run you through the process of what mediation is all about and certain technical details and features that we need to keep in mind for the present session to flow smoothly. So firstly, always remember, mediation is a voluntary process. You are here today because you've chosen to be here. The fact that all of you are at this virtual table, that too on a Sunday morning or afternoon, really goes to show your willingness and drive to find a mutually beneficial solution. This exemplifies the very spirit of mediation, and we hope that both the parties comply with the spirit and keep it going for the remainder of the session. It is also important to note that mediation is a flexible process. Now, if at any point in the session you feel that something is not working for you the way you'd like it to work, maybe we can have a conversation about that and figure out how we can solve your issue or address your concern. This flexibility shows the party-driven nature of this entire process. You are free to explore any idea or propose any solution freely at this mediation table. And George and I, we're just here to facilitate this entire conversation. Now, the ball is entirely in your court. However, coming to courts, a mediation session is markedly different from a courtroom litigation. The parties here are not opposed to each other. We are here to work together. Now, imagine a dispute between two parties regarding the ownership of, say, an orange. If they were to go to court, the judge would probably ask them to divide the orange in half and each takes one of the halves. However, what is special about a mediation is that it gives the parties an opportunity to understand each other's needs and concerns and enables them to customize the solution to suit their best interests. This open discussion would allow them to understand that one party only wanted the pulp while the other party only wanted the orange peel. Such a division is not only equitable, but it also maximizes the respective benefits of each party. We, as mediators, are here to ensure that this session goes on extremely smoothly in order to reach the core of the issues 
and we hope that both the parties reach some mutually beneficial solutions. I encourage you to be open and frank with each other and adopt a forward-looking approach to reach an agreement. Feel free to use the time and explore any ideas or concerns that you may have. Now, please remember that this mediation is a completely confidential process. Consider this session as a safety world. We, as mediators, assure you that everything discussed in this session shall remain strictly confidential, and nothing discussed or deliberated upon in this session would be used against any party in a court of law. Now, you might see George and I taking notes during the course of this mediation session. However, we assure you that these notes are just for our personal reference. And should you wish, at the end of the session, we would definitely be willing to destroy our notes. Another thing I would like to flag is that we, as mediators, will be completely impartial and neutral. See, George and I don't want to see either party win or lose. We just want you to have a frank, open, and civil conversation and come to an agreement that you both are really happy with. Now, I would request George to elaborate more on the rules of the parties and set the ground rules and expectations for today's mediation session. George, you have the floor now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sukhru. And good morning, everyone. Um, we understand that it's kind of a, um, a mixed bag that we're all in different parts of the world. So we really thank you for coming out today. We just want to let you know the procedures. Um, in a moment, I will hand it off to you to make your opening statement where you will take a couple of minutes to present your understanding of the case. This is an opportunity for you to hear the issues each of you believes are important. Though it may be tempting to interrupt, please allow each other the courtesy to say their piece uninterrupted. I assure you that throughout the day, you're going to have the opportunity to respond and have your voice heard. After each of you presents your opening statements, you will each have the chance to, inter uh, to have an individual session um, or the caucuses, or you will have the chance to have an open and frank discussion with each other and move on to an individual session later on. Just to let you know, our role as a mediator is to guide the discussion to clarify issues, which may involve asking difficult and uncomfortable questions. Just letting you know that we are only trying to understand the issues and we'll only be doing this with all of the parties. It is not our place to make judgments, form our views or impose decisions. This mediation belongs to you. But that being said, we are going to reality check the situation. We're gonna be checking your offers and concessions to make sure that they're sustainable and that you, everyone is treating each other with respect. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. We wanted to let you know too, that please um, do not, make sure to come to the table with good faith, without prejudice, and to remind you that this mediation is confidential. Our goal today is to come up with an agreement that is satisfactory to all of you. This doesn't mean that we're in litigation. We want everyone to be happy walking away from the table. When an agreement is reached, it will be formalized at the end of the uh, closing joint session. We'll make sure to put it on writing form to make sure that everyone agrees with what is being stated. Now we move on to the opening statements. Although um, the requesting party tends to go first, I wanted to give the floor opening up. To, uh, I wanted to open up the floor to see who wanted to say their piece um, or um, to get more of an opportunity to have more of a free flow conversation. I mean. Everyone just remember when the other party is speaking, it would be great if you could mute yourself just to ensure that there's no disturbances and we can all hear them clearly. And before we start, just remember that conflict is inevitable, but combat is optional. And today we are here to avoid this combat and to have a fruitful discussion and deliberation to ensure that we reach a solution that is mutually beneficial to both of us. So Regina, if you could continue, I'm so sorry. Yes, thank you very much, uh, mediators George and Sukrut, for explaining us in regards to the stages of today's mediation session. I believe it really did enlighten us to have a more structured and also productive mediation today. So good morning, afternoon, and evening, depending wherever you are. Um, happy Ramadan, happy fasting if you are celebrating. I hope everyone here is staying safe and also healthy, especially in this dire pandemic. First and foremost, I would like to thank you, Ali, and also Lisa for agreeing to attend this mediation with us to resolve our problem. I am also pleased to convey my gratitude to the gentlemen mediators, George and also Sakrut, for agreeing to facilitate our discussion in conducting today's mediation session. I hope today we will be able to have a fruitful conversation and come up with amicable solutions that will benefit both parties. 
So JPC places its relationship with FGP as primary focus coming here, which is why your presence and initiative towards attending this mediation today is something that we very much respect. And thank you very much for uh, agreeing to attend this mediation session again. I believe that uh, this will help us in generating solutions here in this session today. Considering the current circumstances, I am really glad that we are able to meet today, although online, and I'm glad that we are able to discuss these challenges and how both parties can discuss what would be the best way to pursue with the matter. So I'd actually like to begin with a brief story of how important my company, JPC, is to me. As a chairwoman of JPC, it is my duty to do what's best for my company, and that has been my initial focus from the day I joined JPC. As you know, JPC has two well-known national parks here in South Kappa, the Baiko National Park as well as Duranga National Park. Baiko and Duranga are home to enormous biodiversity and are an important biotope for the world's remaining gorillas and other wildlife species. My company and Juhalayan authorities have been working so hard to preserve, protect such biodiversity and develop ecological tourism. We aim to create jobs for the people in the area. JDC has one main goal, which is to protect our planet. And our way to achieve that is through Baiko and Duranga. Thus, my company was very saddened to learn that there are companies conducting illegal mining and there were children labor involved. We immediately knew that we can just stand still. To save the environment as well as help these endangered animal species, helping these children, we knew that we had to done was to stop these mining activities. I believe we are on the same page when I say that we are not here to point fingers and I don't want to dwell on the past. I see that it's better for us to focus, unitingly focus on generating solutions together. With that being said, I hope you have understood my side and know that my counsel and I have come today with open minds, with open hearts and good faith, just as mentioned by George and also Zakruth, ready to discuss with you, Ali and also Lisa, on how we could tackle this problem together. With that being said, I believe my counsel would like to add more in regards to the technicalities and legal matters. So Raisa, if you please. Yes, thank you very much, Regina. Before we proceed, I would like to express my gratitude to you, Ali, and your counsel, Lisa, for agreeing to attend today's mediation session, and also for Sukrut and George as the mediators in leading today's discussion. I do hope that today's mediation session could lead us in obtaining solutions that both parties seek. To begin our discussion, firstly, I would like to start by recapping the events that had steered us here today in the means to avoid any misconceptions and have indistinguishable understanding between all of us and for the mediators as well to have a clear guide regarding our discussion. It began as the JPC along with Jehoian authorities are in the process of preserving two national parks, namely Baiko and Duranga in Jahula. However, the existence of former rebels who have made the animals homes in the park along with illegal mining and poaching threatened many species with extinction. In January 2021, there was a report by Amnesty International on cobalt mined by children found in Orange, Microheart, Fasla, and Samgain. Additionally, there was a Swiss news hold, Swiss 22, which received videos showing children working in cobalt mining. These cases alone shows the importance of bringing up the conversation of the mining process. Now, we do need to acknowledge that many locals make their living from small scale artisanal mining and these images and photos depicting many children at work on these operations. So in response, JPC asked companies whether child mined cobalt is used in their products. The company said they were required the suppliers to follow responsible sourcing guidelines. And in preparation for the next international meeting on climate change in Glasgow in November 2021, client would like to discuss several matters in regards to environmental biodiversity. Moreover, in regards to the legal proceedings between JPC and FGT, I have also advised my client, Regina, that litigation would be not the best option to resolve our issue due to three main factors. 
First, litigation is costly, and the money is better to be used for common or personal matters. Second, the reputation that litigation will place upon the two parties will damage or further damage the negative reputation that either party already has. And last but not least, litigation will hinder both parties to potentially find a feasible and potential solution to the problems. And I think all of us here knows that litigation is an acrimonious process. I also believe that mediation isn't the place to debate legal arguments. I hope we won't be dwelling on it too much, putting our focus and effort to solve the dispute amicably and searching for the best alternative that could benefit both parties. With that, I would like to address current interests of my client, especially in coming to this mediation today. First, to be clarified and receive understanding by FGT in relating to the mining process of the cobalt for the production of ion lithium batteries. And second, to discuss the effects towards the environment and biodiversity of the area and find solutions on how we can mitigate the further hazardous effects and protect the environment. I hope my role here today could assist both of the clients in reaching mutual agreement, as well as help both parties in regards to the legal aspects. I also kindly ask Lisa, as the legal counsel for Ali, to partake in enlightenment of the legal aspect as well. I do understand that there has been tension before both of the parties, between both of the parties, and I do hope this tension could be put in the past as we try to solve this issue together. I look forward to hearing from your side as well and productive mediation today. And I'll pass the time back to you, uh, mediators. Thank you so much for uh, cl uh, clarifying your opening statement, excuse me. We really appreciate it. Um, okay, now that we've heard your opening statement, I will summarize shortly, quick, uh, quickly, your interests. So your interest is on um, improving uh, and uh, moving forward uh, with the mining process of cobalt. Um, and addressing the environmental issues that they have. And we're also wanting to address the issues that come up with the labor, um, especially because it involves child labor and, and the issues that um, have happened within um, the national parks within the country, especially in regards to the rebels living in the area and the threatening um, through uh, the environmental issues through poaching. Um, and we wanna make sure that we try not to go through litigation because we wanna make sure that everyone is happy with this entire process. Um, if there isn't anything else to add, I will want to make sure that um, the other side has to their opening statement now. Um, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. It's wonderful to see you all here and I hope everyone is keeping safe and that your families are healthy. Um, as I stated earlier, my name is Oli Olsen, and I am the Managing Director of Future Green Technology Company. Um, I'd like to begin my opening statement by saying a very warm thank you to Regina um, for requesting this mediation and also to her council for being here to support her. Now, I'd like to thank um, our esteemed mediators for facilitating this meeting. I am hopeful about this mediation process, um, not just about the fruitful outcomes that we can achieve together today, but also how we can continue to utilize this process in the future to protect our planet. Um, please permit me to give a little bit of background information about FGT. Um, FGT is a multinational company that is well known for developing batteries. We are incorporated in Norway, but we are a global company. In recent years, we have become a leader in the development of new energy sources through our Green Research Center. And we believe that we are on the verge of an innovative development that will improve the sustainability of the battery industry. I'd like to announce that we are working on developing a cobalt-free lithium-ion battery, which we hope will be on the market by 2025. I admit that ours is an industry that is heavily reliant on mineral elements, which puts a huge strain on the environment. We recognize all of these impacts and we are committed um, to striving to develop greener battery technologies However, in the meantime, we also recognize that we cannot ignore the wildlife and also the local communities that call Johulu home. So since 2016, our charity, Future Green Charity or FGC, has been working with the authorities in Johulu to protect human rights and also to protect threatened wildlife in the remote forest areas in the Bahoko National Park, Baiko National Park. We also acknowledge that there are problems in the mineral supply chain. 
the most dire of them being the use of child labor. And I'm here to assure you all that we require our suppliers to follow responsible sourcing guidelines. Also, since 2016, we have been working with the government in Jehula on a strategy to eradicate child labor in the mining, in mining by 2025. We are also working with our clients who are major electronic and vehicle companies to solve this problem. I would like to reiterate that FGT takes the problem of illegal mining and child labor very seriously. And we are committed to working together with JPC towards this collective goal. What we would like to know from JPC is, what more can we do? How else can we help? We are here to hear your suggestions and to offer our support. I would now like to hand over to my counsel, Lisa Collins, to speak on the details of the legal initiatives that we've been involved in with our clients, with our suppliers, and also with the government in Johula. Thank you all so much for listening and for being here. Lisa, over to you. Thank you, Ali, and I hope uh, everybody's families are well. I uh, Not to reiterate the same point, but just thank you so much to everybody for being here. Um, thank you to Regina and to Risa, and thank you so much to our mediators for facilitating this really important discussion today. Um, I really am excited to see, you know, what kind of creative solutions both companies can come up to this truly important problem being just especially a couple of days out of Earth Day. I think it's a great time to be speaking about this. So I am counsel, as I mentioned, to uh, Mr. Olson, and I am aware that my solicitor role is quite different from my role here today. I'm acting really just to support Mr. Olson's interests with my legal knowledge and just to ensure that any agreement or settlement that's reached today is fully enforceable. So as a starting point, I'd just like to say I'm very heartened by Ms. Reyes's um, comments about what your goals and your aims are in being here today. And how you're speaking about, you know, litigation not being the correct route because of it being costly, an adversarial process. So as a starting point, both parties seem to have the shared interest of avoiding litigation and coming together and working together, which is a great starting point. Additionally, I feel that both parties have a shared interest in improving the process of meeting, discussing and negotiating agreements on climate change to protect the planet. My client, Mr. Olson, is fully aware of how the industry is depleting Jehula's resources. And that was one of the main reasons why the charity was established in 2016. So the charity's goals and aims are really to preserve um, certain animal species, especially the mountain gorilla, and also to develop um, education, human rights and labor rights to help the communities in Jehula. So Mr. Olson is a visionary, really, and his commitment to the environment through his work is clear. But of course, as his advisor, I'm the realist and perhaps a bit of a skeptic at times and always want to make sure that his interests are fully preserved. And in that mind, there has we have encountered a couple of difficulties on the ground of Jehula. And I mention this because we want to make sure that both international and local companies all have the same goals and interests in mind. And we would love to hear a bit more about JPC's goals and interests regarding the charity to see how we can merge our interests and how we can work together to further these goals. So Mr. Olson mentioned a bit about the initiatives that have been taken so far by um, FGT. One of the main ones is that one of our suppliers, we have worked with them to stop um, buying cobalt from the areas in Jehula who were subject to the child mining um, as shown by Amnesty Ireland's report. And we have since put together a detailed program on how to eradicate and eliminate child mining practices through the supply chain. Since then as well, eight major electronic and vehicle companies who were connected to this supply chain have joined our initiative to solve the problem. Additionally, FGT's clients are working with non-governmental organizations to eliminate child labor practices, and they do this by mapping the supply chain and performing audit on, audits on it on a regular basis. The, regarding the legal initiatives with the government, FGT is determined to achieve the government's aim of eradicating child labor practices by 2025. 
So I, I really hope that this gives everybody just a brief overview of what FGT's aims are and what we're planning to do and how we could work together and come together today with that in mind. And I really think that this is a great opportunity for two businesses to come together and figure out how to basically save the planet and how we can do our jobs in a better and a more economically and environmentally friendly way. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Oli and Lisa. So from what I understand, both the parties here um, are with the main goals, and that is the protection of the environment and the prevention of any further deterioration of the environment and the protection of the wildlife of uh, Johula. And uh, so basically, from what I understand, um, FGT is a leader in the development of new energy sources. You're currently working on the creation of cobalt-free technology for the lithium-ion batteries by the year 2025. And well, you're committed to developing uh, green technologies. And along with that, after reading the reports by Amnesty International, you have taken uh, various measures in order to ensure that all of your um, sourcing happens in a very responsible manner. And that is why you're working with the local authorities and the NGOs for that purpose. And along with that, I think the main goals of both the parties here is to reach creative solutions in order to solve the problem on the ground. And if I were to just lay the agenda, um, I'll just share my screen. Is my screen visible to all the parties? Great. Okay, so from what I understand, the first agenda would be the clarification with respect to the sourcing of the cobalt. Are both the parties okay with that? Or is there anything else that I need to add to this agenda point? And I think the second agenda point that um, we discussed here was to reach creative solutions in order to solve the problems and hopefully collaborate both the parties in order to ensure that child labor is eradicated from the Jehulian um, forests and any further deterioration of the environment does not take place. George, do you think uh, there's anything else that we could add to this? Um, yes. Um, also, apart from the clarification on reaching the um, they also want to clarify, um, apart from the environmental issues and the sourcing issues, how they can improve um, the situation on the ground as well. Um, so it isn't just about prevention, but they also want to make sure that they're improving the situation. So as we continue on with this agenda, does anyone else have anything else that they need to add that they believe that is um, um, relevant to the situation? We believe that both um, of you have come, oh, excuse me, I apologize. Apologize, I apologize for interrupting. Um, I would just like to maybe speak on some of the initiatives that um, FGT are currently working on, some of our green initiatives, um, just to highlight to um, JPC and to Regina and her council, you know, that we are really committed to um, a green technology in the future and to reduce and completely um, avoiding the use of um, cobalt powered batteries in the future. So if that's something that we could put on the agenda, I'd really appreciate that, please. Absolutely. If JPC is okay with that, we could add that to the agenda. Yes, please. I was just about to add the same thing. I would just want to further yeah. understand in regards to the batteries that uh, Ollie had just explained. Yeah. I would also like to point out that each of the party also mentioned that um, each side wants to make sure that the agreement um, that they both come up with is fully enforceable. So you also want legal mechanisms to, um, to be in place. Is that correct? Um, I think I'll let my counsel respond to that. She's the expert in that area. Yeah, um, if any agreement is reached here today, we would hope to get some type of a, a document in place for just to enforce it. 
So can you make sure to add that to the agenda, Sir Kurt, that we make sure that we have um, legal um, mechanisms uh, to make sure that this is enforceable at the end? Yeah, just a second. So I would also like to check with my counsel, Raisa, would that be also okay to add in as an agenda? Um, yes, that will be perfect. Jade, I think that's it then. Yep, yeah, because if there's no nothing else to move forward with the agenda, let's move um, on. I have one more. I, I would like to add one more thing to the agenda, if that's okay. Um, yeah. My council has, you know, gone into detail about the initiatives that we're currently involved in, both in Jehula and with our suppliers and, and our clients. Um, I know that Regina and her council have also set out some of, you know, the initiatives they are involved in as well. But because they are a local organization that works on the ground, we would be grateful if they could flesh out um, in more detail the initiatives they're involved in and also where they would like us to, to support them and how they would like us to support them in those areas. So it could be part, part um, local initiatives and partnerships as the yes. fifth agenda. So their, their goals and the, the initiatives they are currently taking, taking part in. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for um, this. If there's nothing else uh, to add to the agenda, um, uh, let's move on to the first one. Um, sorry, George. I I think I would like to add one more, okay. yeah. and I think it could be added uh, in the second agenda, which is to discuss about the biodiversity. Sure. And if that's also fine with Lisa and also Ali. Uh, so I guess we can discuss that in the third agenda, reaching creative solutions for prevention of child labor and protection of environment. Great, so we could discuss that over there. Okay, I think that sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy with that, so thank you. So I'll just put all of this on the chat box so I can refer to it throughout the session and I'll stop sharing the screen right now because it just disrupts the flow. And then while he starts putting it in the chat box, I'll get the conversation started um, to the first agenda. Oh, can you go, uh, I forgot, I'm so sorry. I kind of, um, what was the first item on the agenda? So correct. Well, the first item on the agenda was the clarification regarding the sourcing of cobalt. Okay, fantastic. So the clarification regarding the, the sourcing of the cobalt. So um, as the requesting party, would JPC like to begin with um, their side of the argument? I'm sorry, their side of the agenda, please. Yes, uh, if I may, I would just like to start with asking questions to Ali in regards to how has this chain of events uh, affected your company? I would just like to understand better. Um, thank you so much. Um, by chain of events, I correct me if I'm wrong, um, Regina, but I believe you're referring to the 2016 report by Amnesty International um, in relation to um, child labor, the use of child labor in the mining industry. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, well, I'd like to start by stating that, you know, the, the mining supply chain is extremely complicated. Um, now, that is not in any way to excuse our responsibility for ensuring um, that we follow clear guidelines that seek to protect human rights and in particular to avoid the use of slave or child labor within the supply chain. Um, but the 2016 Amnesty International report really highlighted to us how great of an issue you know, this really was. You know, prior to that report, we had been working with our suppliers um, to ensure that they followed um, professional guidelines. However, when we saw the report and, and it's noted that there were approximately 40,000 children involved um, working within the mining industry, to us, that was really appalling. So since then, what we have done is that we have connected with one of our main suppliers and we have put pressure on them and they have confirmed to us that they no longer source their cobalt or buy from markets or from artisanal mines where child labor is used. This is something that we can state and that we are happy to go on record that our main supplier no longer sources um, from um, artisanal mines or illegal mines and from mines where child labor is used. And we have also been in contact with um, eight of our major suppliers 
and we are working together with them on an initiative to ensure that their supply chains are also free from any cobalt mined um, by child laborers. Um, I guess my, my counsel, Lisa, would probably be able to expand more on these um, because, like I said, the, the supply chain is really complicated. Um, but we've also been working on the ground with Joholan authorities, um, like I stated earlier, and Lisa um, expanded on earlier, um, to ensure that, you know, we are able to create opportunities for communities in Johula, and particularly for young children in Johula, because we understand that mining is a source of income for a number of families within those areas. And, you know, while the authorities can um, increase their presence in those areas to ensure that, you know, children are not being abused as child laborers, but at the same time, we understand that we might be taking away uh, an important source of income from the families of these children. And so we are working with the Joholan authorities to try and put in place initiatives, not just to remove the children from the mines, but also hopefully to, to place them into schools, to place them into after school programs, um, and to just support in any way that we can. Lisa will expand on this, but this is actually another important area where we hope that we can um, engage with yourselves, Regina and, and your company, JPC, to further expand on that initiative and to have a, a, a much broader reach and a much broader scope. Um, Lisa, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I think you described that really well, Oli. I mean, the charity, as I think I mentioned in my opening, was founded in 2016 after this report. And I think it really just speaks to how huge an issue this is personally to Oli and to her team and to ensure that this doesn't continue. Um, a lot, I know a lot of the other industry, the industry professionals, you know, some people can say, well, it's out of our hands, it's in our suppliers, what can we do? But Oli has taken the further step of establishing this charity to enforce um, the supply chain regulations and to make sure that each at each step it, it they are um, adhering to the guidelines and you know with Oli's influence the government ended up releasing that strategic document in 2017 with the goal of eradicating the the child labor in mining by 2025 and I think it also leads into what Oli is planning for the future in terms of uh, cobalt free batteries and things like that and um, I think Oli can speak more to that, but I, from 2016, really, it's gone, it's gone up and up. And the um, ideas and the practices that Oli has been coming up with are with that fundamental um, image in mind of completely eradicating it. And from top to bottom, going through and making sure that each supplier is um, complying with the regulations and to perform performing audits on it. And I think I mentioned as well that the main clients of FGT, um, which were, I think, a good few of the big ones that Raisa, you mentioned in your opening statement, they are all now working with the NGOs to eliminate the child labor practices via the supply chain um, oversight and performing the audits. So um, I think, yeah, Oli, if we, if you wanted to at some point get into the conversation about the future technology, that would feed into um, what you're doing up to now and through the future to eradicate the dependency really on cobalt. Um, thank you, Lisa. But I think I'll let Regina maybe respond to what we've both stated and, and get her, her ideas about what we can do to further assist. Right. Thank you very much. And I'm very glad to hear that we're actually on the same page in regards to this supply chain and all with the child labor. And I'm very happy to hear that uh, FGT has actually taken measures to in regards to respond to this child labor. And I'm very happy that we see that this is a serious matter in regards to the child labor. So perhaps to further uh, share my perspective, I would like to say that um, my company has actually uh, come up with a solution to further help FGT to make sure that your suppliers, uh, the, these company suppliers do follow or um, fulfill the requirements and as well as regulations to make sure that they do uh, commit to what they're doing, which is not to use child labor. And perhaps before I uh, maybe present more in regards to the solution, I could ask for Raisa to uh, chime in a bit in regards to the legal matters, Raisa. 
Um, yes, as what my client was just um, saying, if I could just add a bit on the legalities aspect. So in regards to the solution that my clients have have already uh, offered, it is pursuant to Article 299B of the Mining Code, which bans mining and sale of mining products from sites where laws protect human rights and the rights of women and children. We are creating an, an arrangement of precautionary measures moving forward. So in regards to that, what is FGT's perspective in regards to this? Um, we are definitely in support of that legislation. Um, I'm not 100% sure on this, but uh, I think this was something that um, FGT might have supported the Johulan government in helping to introduce. Lisa, please correct me if I'm wrong. You are the, the legal expert here. Um, and since, I, I, as far as I'm aware, um, since that law was implemented, there's actually been um, some improvement in the in relation to the use of child labor. Now it's not enough. It's not enough until child labor is completely eradicated because children should not be working in such a dangerous environment that is a detriment to their physical and uh, mental well-being and also impedes on the education. Um, but we, we, we note that there has been some improvements since the introduction of that law. And um, if it is correct that we actually supported the Johulan government in working, working to implement that law, then I think that shows you know, our commitment to eradicating child labor, not just within our supply chain, but also within um, the mining industry as a whole. So, so it seems that we're making good progress here. It seems that we both have addressed each other's um, issues. Um, it seems that there has been some um, mutual workings within similar um, within similar spaces. Um, it seems to be that there is some kind of not not real deep disagreement because there seems to be a lot of agreement between both parties here. Um, is there any way that we can um, probably speak to um, have the meeting with? Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, JCP to have a bit more information about this so we can uh, get a little bit more clarity and to give us a bit more of an understanding. It'll definitely help um, open us as the mediators a bit more about the situation itself, um, giving us a, bi a bigger picture and a bigger perspective. If that is okay with you, uh, Team A? Yeah, we are, we're happy. Please go ahead and have a private session with, um, with JPC. Um, in the meantime, I think we'll be, myself and Lisa will be thinking about what we've heard thus far and try and come up with some ideas um, that we can present to them um, once we are allowed back into the meeting. That would be fantastic. And then after we have their meeting with uh, uh, FGT, we'll have, our, uh, excuse me, with JCP, we'll have our meeting with you as well. So we can have for further clarification from your end as well. Session supervisor, if you could please move them to the other room. Yeah, they can join their respective breakout rooms. Okay, I believe um, they are out of the way. Um, so we wanted to thank you guys as JCP for um, taking the time out um, and having this meeting with us. We wanted to reiterate the matters of confidentiality. Everything that stays with uh, that you say within this meeting will not be repeated. It will not be used. Um, just to let you know, too, you, we will only have the authority to say whatever you want us to say to the other team um, if you choose to. So we have no authority to say what you have told us. So uh, just to let you know to feel free to say whatever, share whatever you want to. Um, we will ask questions in order for us to uh, have more clarification on what you mean. Um, but uh, please uh, feel free to share um, any information more about these initiatives and um, more about your goals and what you aim to get out of this mediation. Right, so perhaps if I could share my perspectives in regards to the mediation so far. Uh, to be frank, I'm very happy that FGT is also on the same page in regards to uh, the clarification so far, which is in regards to the sourcing of such cobalt and with the child labor. And I'm very happy that they also see that this is an important issue. 
to be further taken into account and also to take measures upon. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward in providing solutions and discussing solutions with Ali and also Lisa here in this discussion. And I hope we can agree later in the end of this mediation section so that we can have creative solutions to overcome these uh, overcome these problems that brought us here in the first place, George and also Sukrut. Regina, uh, could you tell us more about the solution that you were talking about? The collaboration that you wanted to do with FGT in order to ensure that uh, there is no child labor on the ground in Chihula. If you could maybe expand on that. Right. So for the solutions and if, Raisa, if I miss anything, please add on to this later. Uh, we thought about having a supervision and also an oversight for the supply chain of the FGT's companies, uh, FGT's uh, companies that are related to FGT. Uh, and Raisa has scratched up on, up on a bit, I think, in, in the main session that uh, we could supervise in regards to whether or not these suppliers are complying to the rules and also regulations and also requirements. And yeah, we would want to know if they are also um, in line with the solution. And I think this would also ensure that the suppliers won't use any more child labor to produce these cobalt. Great, so that's good to hear. I think both of you are on the same page here with respect to your goals as the eradication of child labor and the protection of the environment. So with regards to this particular solution, uh, do you want us to present it to them when we have our private session with them? Or would you feel more comfortable doing it yourself? I think I could ask for you, George, and also Sukrut to assist us in delivering this message and solution. And yeah, perhaps they could share their perspectives in regards to this to you in a private session or either in the main session, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really, uh, I don't, uh, I don't really mind in regards to that. But yes, I would very much like for your assistance to relay this uh, discussion. Of course, yes. we'd be really happy to. And I just wanted to be clarified as well. Um, as we continue on with this, is there any other solutions that you think that would be beneficial in implementing apart from the existing um, um, works that um, uh, TF, uh, TGF is uh, continuing on doing, sorry, FTG is continuing on doing? Or do you believe that you wanted to implement anything else um, apart from, from um, supervision and oversight of the supply chain and working with them to uh, ensure the regulations are being met? Well, there are actually several solutions in relation to this eradication of um, eradication of child labor. But for our main solution, that would be the supervision and also oversight. And in regards to the other solutions that we have, I think uh, I would like to relay that uh, directly to Ali and also Lisa, if that's okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Of course. Um, thank you so much for letting us know. Um, that really clarifies a lot of um, the goals and where you want to head this mediation. Uh, we really appreciate your candor. I think we are done here and um, it would be great if we could have our uh, private session with the other team now. Session supervisor, if you could please ask um, FGT to come back to the room and maybe you can move um, Julia Park's company to the other room. Sure, I'll do that. Thank you very much, George, and also Sukrut for the assistance. Thank you so much, Regina and Raisa. Welcome back, Lisa and Uli. Thank Hello. you. Hello. <laughs> Great. So right now we had a discussion with them with regards to the solution that they were going to present to you. And um, so with regards to the proposal that they have come up with in order to collaborate with you, in order to ensure that child labor is eradicated from Julia and at the same time, the environment is also protected. So what they suggested was that um, they want to supervise and oversee the supply process in order to ensure that when you source your cobalt from the Jul uh, Julian uh, mines, no kind of child labor is involved in the same. And at the same time, uh, environment is not destructed in the process. George, is there anything that I missed? Uh, 
please go ahead. Um, pretty, you pretty much summarized it very well. Um, they want to, they want to be able to have oversight and working within the, um, that you, the companies, um, like FGT are working within the rules, existing rules and regulations, and ensuring that the supply chain is um, of following these rules. Um, and we want to make sure, do you, what do you think with this kind of uh, solution work for you? Do you think that it's something that you'd be able to um, implement? Do, what do you, can I, we want to get your opinion on it. What do you think? Um, at the moment, we, we have our own um, supply guidelines, which we, uh, we um, provide to our suppliers and we um, ensure that they comply with. Um, now, like I stated, it's a very complicated process. And so we try our best and we've been working really hard to ensure um, a lack of that we do not source coal by cobalt mined by child laborers. Um, from my perspective and from our business perspective, we have no um, issues opening up, um, providing information to JPC in relation to you know, our supply chain and our suppliers and where they get their cobalt from. Um, obviously, we would need to speak to our suppliers and you know, get their support on this. But thus far, our suppliers have been you know, part and parcel of, the, of this initiative. They need to be for us to be able to make the, the claims that we do. Um, so from our perspective, I, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, but you know, Lisa, she's the she's the um, legal expert here, so she's the one who knows if there might be any legal complications with that. So I think I'll let her speak a bit on any of the legal issues that may arise, and we'll see how we can resolve those here before we proceed. Thanks, Oli. Um, I, yeah, I don't foresee any major problem with them, you know, overseeing the supply process. I know we do have our own regulations, but um, I, Oli is very, you know, amenable and flexible to making sure that it's as, as, as rigid in terms of the supply process as possible and adhering to all the regulations. I think we would just also like a bit of information about, you know, what JPC's um, goals and interests are on the ground um, in just relation into the charity and what the charity's work is doing just to ensure that like going forward if we do um, you know come give them the oversight and the supervision of the supply regulations that they're everything that they're doing is in line with our vision and our goals as well for Jehola and um, I think that they are I think that they've mentioned that they are but I wouldn't mind just fleshing that out a bit more because then I can I think that can feed into a potential future discussion about the technology that Oli was talking about at the start and how they could collaborate on that in the future. That sounds fantastic so uh, what we will do is that when we move on to the back into the joint session, we will make sure that um, that would you mind if I share this op opinion with you? This is confidential and we want to make sure that uh, I don't want to overstep my boundary. But would you mind if I share this opinion that you have stated with, with them and then we can further clarify it um, together in the joint session? Um, yes, yes. Um Jorge, Judge, I, I genuinely do not mind you sharing that information. Um, thus far, we haven't really heard in detail the work that JPC does. Um, we've been very open with, you know, the work that we're currently doing. We know it's not perfect, but, you know, little by little, you know, drop by drop, uh, we, we hopefully, we hope to eradicate um, child mining and also protect the environment. Um, but we'd like to hear in detail what work JPC is doing on the ground. You know, they are a local organization. They know the ins and outs of Jahola and the national parks. So we really want to hear about that so we can, you know, together put our heads together and know where um, FGT fits into that, where we can actually be of the greatest support, you know, and how our technologies can further propel you know, the, the green revolution, really. Um, so if you could share that with them, we really would like to get as much information from them about the wonderful work that they're doing on the ground. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And to reiterate what George said, um, there is an additional layer of confidentiality to this private meeting. And since you are willing to let us speak and tell them about what we discussed in the private session, we could go back to the main room and over there, we could um, tell them about how there is an agreement from both sides in order to ensure some kind of collaboration with regards to supervision and oversight over the supply process. However, as you mentioned, uh, you need to speak to your suppliers first. However, uh, that won't be a problem, as you mentioned, because they are also uh, 
uh, a part of this effort in order to uh, eradicate uh, the child labor so that's great and we could also ask them to elaborate more on the efforts undertaken by them on the ground by their charity and how you could collaborate with them in order to further their goals so if everyone's on the same page we can go back to the main room uh, we can that's ask okay. them to go back to the main room yeah I'll call them. Great. Welcome back, Regina and Isa. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for coming to um, having our meetings. We really appreciate you. Um, and we have a big uh, of a bigger perspective on the way that these things are going to be working and um, how each group um, is approaching this mediation. Um, we would like to clarify a bit more. We're going to summarize this all together. That way we have a better idea and a better understanding together about how, how we are heading. Um, so the solutions that JCP has currently um, put forth is the supervision and oversight of the supply chains um, in order to um, work together and improve, make sure that the rules and the regulations are being followed in order to eradicate child uh, labor and in order to make sure that the environment is actually improved upon and that it isn't causing any more damage um, in the interest of Jahula. And FGT has stated that um, they do already follow their own guidance, um, and they, but they are amenable to and flexible to working with uh, JCP in the way that um, in order to eradicate this child labor issue and in order to improve the environment. Um, but as uh, we state, JC, uh, excuse me, as FGT has stated before, uh, they, want, they would really like to work with uh, JC, JCP on this issue. But uh, FGT has stated that they wanna know more about uh, JCP's goals, um, get a bit more information on what, um, the, uh, where they're headed, what they want to do. Um, in order so they have a better understanding of the way that F, uh, JCP wants to function. And so they are able to um, be flexible and be able to work together as a group in order to uh, have these similar goals and uh, eradicate child labor and improve the environment. Thank you so much, George. So um, Regina, it would be great if you could elaborate on the efforts that your charity has undertaken in this field. And maybe you can talk to them and collaborate with regards to how they can help you in order to further your goals. That'd be great. Right, I'm sorry if I was not uh, 100% or if I was not clear enough in the beginning of the words that I use are confusing. Uh, in regards to my goal here in today, I would like my company is focusing on not uh, that there in the parks there would not be any more mining anymore, and that's why when we heard that uh, FGT has their goals to have a battery-free cobalt, we were very much uh, happy to hear in regards to that. And as for the solutions that we have also provide uh, the solutions that we have in mind. If that's okay to talk about it now to the either parties and also George and uh, Sukrut, if that's okay. Uh, aside from the aside from the supervision and also oversight that we are willing to provide to FGT, we also thought about of having a joint investigation towards the suppliers to make sure that they also comply. So aside from the supervision, we can also have a joint investigation if they pref uh, if they prefer to do this. And also perhaps a, in regards to directly respond or directly, the solution directly in regards to the education for the child labor. I believe that's also part of Ollie's concern. Uh, we thought about what if FGT and their multinational companies could establish a happy Johula program or whatever, the name will be later, where the where FGT could establish a school and provide free nutritious, free nutritious meals in the school. And because there has been a research in regards to that, and if FGT is willing to proceed on with the solution, we could also provide, or my council could later send in the send in the research paper. And for, well, for I'm sorry if I'm blabbering too much, but in regards to this solution, this Happy Jahula program or this school program, it would aim for the children to 
go to school and they would feel comfortable going to school and um, the school could like provide more resources towards towards the towards the kids so that they could feel more comfortable going to school and therefore focusing on more and the education. So uh, perhaps Raisa, am I missing anything? Yes, just to um, chime in a little bit, what my client is saying is that um, we as the Jahula Parks Company are willing to talk about the solutions that um, that both parties could make that we, that my client right now he, he here is trying to build uh, solutions together with FGT. And in regards to the solutions that the Happy Jahula program, I believe it's my part to tell the technicalities here that um, in regards to that, we, as my client have mentioned that we could provide free nutritious meals to the school, to the kids, so, and to provide more resources to the school so that the kids could have more positive activity. And for, um, in regards to the investment of the long-term solution, we could uh, provide a soft skill school. So when they graduate properly, they can be directed to working perhaps at ecotourism. And lastly, for um, FGC perhaps to um, build a school as a form of charity and uh, we would like to uh, invite we would like to invite um, Ollie and also Lisa on what do you think about um, about our uh, about the solution that we will uh, build uh, I apologize, Ollie and Lisa. Before we continue, I don't I don't want to um, interrupt you or anything. I just want to ask a bit more clarification on my end, as me and Sukrut um, have been chatting. So we're we were wanting to ask. So you want to implement a joint investigation team into the supply chain, and you want to, uh, if if I'm hearing this correctly, implement um, a school program that uh, helps better the community, better the local, um, help the local children, um, um, you know, provide food, things like that. A am, I, am I correct? Um, um, is there any more that you wanted to add to that? I, I just wanted to be a bit more clear about where this was heading. Yes, um, I would just like to uh, clarify that our uh, solution is to prevent the child mining for the kids. Um, within that area to have more uh, positive um, activities. And I believe that my client has have to add on. Yes, Raisa, thank you very much for clarifying that. And uh, Georgia, yeah, that is, uh, George, that is what we are, um, that is our proposed solutions and ideas in regards to the child labor. So we would, so we would very much like to hear um, FGT's opinion in regards to this. Lee and Lisa. Um, thank you so much, Regina and Raisa. Um, before I actually respond to your question, I, I do want to um, maybe paint a picture for you of you know the initiatives that we're currently working on because um, they are important so you can better understand um, our goal of working towards cobalt-free batteries by 2025. So at the moment, we're working with a number of universities as part of our, our Green um, Research Center. And one of the things we're working on is um, on creating um, batteries that charge quickly in the space of 30 seconds for for example, and on creating batteries that last much longer than the current batteries do. And most of these innovations are targeted towards cars. And the reason for that is because we recognize that cars contribute a huge amount of carbon to the, to the atmosphere. And so our goal really is to reduce the amount of carbon that cars are producing. And we believe that our batteries and our innovations within our new batteries will be able to do this. And of course, like I mentioned in my opening statement, our primary goal is to um, put on the market our cobalt-free battery by 2025. And of course, this is going to be momentous because it is going to completely eradicate uh, you know, mining for cobalt for batteries. And um, the reason why I, I, I want to state that and highlight that first 
is because the initiatives that we are currently working on is to ensure that, you know, by 2025, when we do reach a place where we have cobalt free batteries, that we do not leave these communities depleted. So we are not a company that will that wants to come into a place like Johula, um, take its natural resources and then abandon um, the communities and the um, natural environment once we have gotten what we want. That's not the type of um, organization that we are. We are a community that isn't just green in name, but also green in terms of our, 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 our initiatives and, and you know, the, the underlying ethos of our business is sustainability. Uh, and so I am happy with the suggestions you've made. Um, I think the school program is wonderful because what it does is it takes children out of the minds, it places them in schools where they have an opportunity to get an education, but also it also secures their future because you also mentioned the, uh, the soft skill program as well for children once they leave primary and secondary school, they can then um, get um, skills that could enable them to um, begin technical professions. Um, we are definitely open to those ideas. We think they are wonderful ideas. And of course, the breast, breakfast club is important because, you know, um, an empty belly really is not a, a conducive state for one to learn. And, and, and so I think those ideas are wonderful. Um, I will, in a minute, I will let my, my um, legal counsel, Lisa, um, share her thoughts on the legal ramifications of this. Um, so I'm happy with those ideas. The one question I do have for you though is, are there any schools that you are currently working with in Johula that you think would benefit um, from these initiatives? And then to move on to the second um, suggestion that you made, which is an investigation into our supply chain. I think, um, like I stated in, in the caucus, um, the suggestion about the oversight mechanism, we are open to that and we believe our suppliers would be open to that, but we do need to get confirmation from them. Um, in terms of an investigation, I think um, we have no issues with that. Our hands are clean and we are willing to provide you with the necessary um, documentation that you need, of course, um, once there is a non-disclosure agreement in place to ensure you know, that if there is confidential information that's protected, but Lisa will speak a, bit, a little bit more on that. Um, so we are happy with that. Uh, we are happy with an investigation for us to actually ensure that the claims we have made are, you know, accurate. And then over time, we are happy with an oversight mechanism to ensure that we continue to maintain, you know, a supply chain that is free of child labor. Um, so those suggestions sound wonderful to me and thank you so much for making them. Um, but of course, there are legal ramifications or there could be legal ramifications to all of this. Um, so I'll let my legal counsel speak on what she thinks some of these might be and how we can hopefully resolve them now um, before we proceed. Thanks, Oli. I, I think they're really fantastic ideas and great initiatives to put forward. The um, supervision and oversight makes sense. I mean, the joint investigation as well, as Oli mentioned, I don't think um, FGT suppliers would have a problem with that. But of course, so we would just have to double check with them and make sure that we have all the appropriate documentation in place. Um, but as the major ones I mentioned earlier are already uh, looking into their supply chains, I think that they would be amenable to that. And the um, education program, the Happy Jahula program, I think that's a great initiative. And I think it really speaks to um, Oli's mention before of how uh, she didn't want to have the company be seen as a company that just goes in, takes the natural resources and is never seen from again. I, she really mentioned to me at the outset of this mediation that one of the most important um, outcomes of today was hopefully to to emphasize that the future technology that she is developing can benefit everybody and that she would really like you know the joint partnership with JPC to continue on in the future so um, as long as um, Marisa is um, amenable to helping me with the documentation in terms of the NDA and um, getting the suppliers um, well the suppliers uh permission which we will do um i think going forward i don't see i don't foresee any uh, major ramifications to that and i think it's it's very positive so far so thank you for suggesting that so before we move ahead i'll just quickly summarize what we discussed because a couple of options were put on the table over here so i'll just quickly summarize all of them 
um, Oli has came out with a very uh, long-term solution to this problem, and that is uh, creating cobalt-free batteries in order to ensure that cobalt mining does not have to take place in the first place. And however, they want to ensure that theirs is not a company which uses the resources of the area and does not give anything back to them. And in order to ensure that they give back to the community, the local uh, Julian people, they are uh, amenable to the different uh, creative solutions that uh, Regina and uh, Reza put forward. I'll just quickly summarize them. So the most important one we heard was the Happy uh, Jula program where they discussed the creation of schools in order to ensure that the kids over here get education so that they go from the mines to schools and once they get education opportunities, they won't have to go to mining and that would be prevented altogether. And as a way of incentivizing education, I think there was also the discussion of a breakfast club where nutritious meals would be provided. And I think this is something which happens in every part of the world where Schools provide nutritious meals in order to attract students. And I think that would be a great idea. And along with that, I think you also discussed the matters of the investigation. However, um, Oli and Lisa, as they clarified, they would have to first um, get in touch with their suppliers in order to ensure that they are on board with it. However, because they are personally also invested in this course, they would be amenable. However, there needs to be a discussion with regards to that. But with regards to the other points, I think all of us are on board. So, uh, Raisa, if you want to add something to this. Um, apologies before, Raisa, um, before you speak. Um, I just kind of want to get some clarification. Um, I, I, I asked in relation to the school, school program, if, Regina, you had any local schools that you are currently, JPC was currently involved in, that you would like us to you know, step into uh, to join in to further strengthen that program. And we'd really like to hit the ground running. So if you already have a school initiative in place uh, with local schools in Jehula, then we'd like to get involved with this and get started as soon as possible. So could you please let me know if there are any of these schools already you're already working with? Right, thank you very much for that question, Ali. And to answer your question, as of now, we are, our JPC is not um, engaged in any schools, but we are very willing to send you a list of schools or a list of um, locations that needs uh, further development for education to your company if that does help you here in, here in the Jahula. And yeah, I'm very glad that you are also in line with this solution because because both of us agree that education is important for these kids and it it would very much prevent them from doing local or i'm sorry from doing mining and that is very dangerous and we don't want that so i hope that answers your concerns ali and perhaps raisa um, am i missing sorry it, it, it does um i don't know if lisa because she probably would be um, leading this um, if she would like a, a, a detailed list maybe of the, the schools in Jehula um, and also what schools JPC think would be best suited to this um, so we can present them to our board and our legal team and we can really get started on the documentation. Um, Lisa, do you think that's something that we need? Yeah, thanks, Ali. I think that's that's a great idea. And um, this being the idea's mediation, perhaps we could even schedule a future mediation where you guys could maybe have a presentation ready or something for our agenda document, something that we can, as Ali said, bring back to the board and, and list out exactly how the program is going to go. But we are, as, as she mentioned, more than willing and um, happy to take on board that project. Yes, perhaps to chime in on what Lisa have mentioned uh, before, I could just, uh, after this mediation session, I could just send the list to uh, privately to Lisa as counsels here. And I'll just pass the time back to my, um, to my client, I'm sorry, if she has more to add. Well, I think, Ray, so we have already um, shared our solutions with Ali and Lisa, I believe. And perhaps if there are no more no more inquiries or no more concerns to be addressed here. Maybe I can just give the ball back to George and also Sakrut yes. to 
summarize sorry can I everything. just I'm so sorry. I just might add just to Race's point before we uh, move on. Just, yeah, the list after the mediation will be great. And I think also if you could put together maybe just a quick document setting out, you know, exactly what the funding is going to and how it's going to work. It's just at the end of the day, it might be easier to bring to the board with like a very succinct document listing all that out. And as I said, we are very open to coming to another mediation to hash out the terms. But the list is, is a great starting point. So that'd be great. Thank you. Um, yes. Apologies. Could I just ask the mediators maybe to to put up the the agenda uh, items a bit? Um, we've been here for I believe over an hour, and I, they've completely left my mind. Um, Absolutely. Um, he'll put it up, and I just wanted to remind you as well that they are in your text box, so you can also check there um, to follow along um in case uh you want to write it down for your notes but we'll be going over it right now so for agenda number one the clarifications regarding the sourcing of the cobalt from jahula so we've clarified that um we've clarified a bit how we're going to handle this so we've decided that um because of they'll be working together uh, both jpc and fgt on the way that the supply chain will be um uh, if there's any issues on the supply chain, um, the supervision and the oversight of the supply chain will be held by JPC in order to uh, improve and in order for make, to make sure that FGT is following guidelines. Um, because we see that local goals of, for uh, FGT is to have cobalt-free batteries by 2025 in order for them to shift their uh, attention away from um, cobalt, cobalt sourcing cobalt altogether in order to improve um, the situation within um, Jah the Jahula. Um, so for the, uh, uh, if we are happy, we're moving on to the second point of the agenda, the creation of the new energy sources and research regarding the creation of cobalt free batteries. We see that, um, what do you call it? Uh, FGT is um, looking at other sources and is re conducting a lot of research in the creation of cobalt free batteries in order to shift away their attention. So moving on to uh, number two, because they're shifting away from this attention, we see that um, JPC is taking on, um, excuse me, FGT will start taking on local initiatives um, and will be um, supported by FGT uh, by a funding of schools, um, of schools nutritious meals in order to um, help the communities around uh, in Jahula in order so even though that they're no longer investing um, this sort of economics, they're not just taking away from Jahula, they're also giving back to the community that they were able to gain from. Um, they were also able to, we, we were also able to reach um, a creative solution um, in order to prevent child labor, in order to protect the environment by uh, this implementation of creating cobalt free batteries. We see that um, as the technology tends to progress, FGT does wants to shift away from this kind of um, sourcing that is um, dangerous and that is affecting local communities. Um, and so we see that they are amenable and flexible um, in the situation and they are willing to work with uh, JPC in regards to this um, by forming a joint investigation team as well um, in order to make sure that things are being followed. Um, and on the number four is the mechanisms to make sure that they're in, these points are enforceable is that they will be creating legal documents um, that they will be sending each other um, in regards to the way that the schools are being funded um, from um, uh, JPC that uh, JPC will be sending to FGT. Um, and they will also be um, making sure, uh, FGT will also be making sure with their suppliers that they are okay with the way that um, um, JPC will be investigating to make sure that sourcing is done ethically and making sure that they are being followed by rules and regulations. Um, is it, uh, Sukrut, would you like to add on to that? I think that was a very great summary of the entire thing. I'll just stop screen sharing. And I think uh, I'm very glad that both the parties were collaborative throughout the session. And well, I think this, this receptive attitude which you had throughout the session just reminds me of one thing. And that is an ounce of mediation is equal to a pound of arbitration and a ton of litigation. So um, we discussed so much in this one session, which could not have been discussed in a series of litigation uh, sessions. And I'm very glad that this happened. And both of you all were extremely collaborative because I think there was a big common ground and that is the protection of environment and the eradication of child labor from Jahula. So um, 
if any both the parties um, want to add something to this yeah yeah so i would like to um i'd like to say thank you to to jpc um for requesting this session it's been really helpful and it's wonderful to meet uh, another organization that is committed to protecting the environment and protecting local communities. Um, the one thing I'd like to say though is that, you know, as FGT, we are proud of our sustainab uh, sustainability claim and um, we have no issues with being transparent and opening up, you know, our systems to the world. Um, as we have reached an agreement to form a collaboration um, to support the local communities in Johola, but also to ensure that we remain um, child, our cobalt supply chain remains child labor free. We would like um, to get some commitment from JPC that they are working together with us in this and you know that they are also proud to be associated with an organization like ourselves. Um, so we are aware that the climate change conference will be taking place later this year in November. And we would actually like to share you know, the agreements that we have reached today, hopefully by that time, all of the legal um, aspects will be put in place. Um, but would like to know if, JP, uh, if JPC will be an, amenable to stand in hand in hand with us at that conference as we share these agreements and as we share our commitment to working with um, the local communities in, in Johula and also to protecting the environment in Johula. And also our... Um, innovations, our future innovations for cobalt-free um, batteries by 2025. JPC, what do you think? What do you think about the partnership, especially with um, COP26 com coming for Glasgow? Right, thank you very much for sharing that. It really did has enlightened me, uh, Ali. And in regards to the partnership, I'm very happy that we are actually on the same page. We have the same interest and we, are actually also looking forward, if Ali is also uh, on board with this idea, is to have a ecological tourism here in Johula. And we would want, very much want FGT to contribute and to partner with us in regards to this eco ecological tourism. So perhaps before my council and I explain further in regards to this proposal, we'd like to ask Ali and also Lisa um, your perspectives in regards to this collaboration? Um, I, we, as we believe, as I believe we stated earlier, we are happy to collaborate with um, JPC in any way that they think is best to protect the environment. And uh, ecological um, tourism sounds like a wonderful idea. Actually, um, it's something that I actually would be happy to um, take part in myself to come down to Juhula and to actually, I believe there are, uh, a range of, of wonderful animals down at the parks um, that are, are, are indigenous to that area. So I'd love to, to see them myself. So of course, we'd be happy um, to take part in that initiative once we flesh out the details on how we can better support. Um, I just would actually like to get a verbal confirmation um, if possible, also for my council, so she knows what to put down on paper, um, that JPC will stand hand in hand with us at um, in Glasgow in November um, at the climate change conference, just so that we can actually make an official announcement that we have agreed um, to these initiatives. Yes, to answer that, uh, my, the answer would be yes, we will, we will do anything to collaborate and also to raise awareness for this environmental impact. So we would very much uh, love to help FGT in regards to this. So just to summarize what we discussed with her, um, FGT and um, Rula Park's company would be hand in hand in the upcoming um, Conference of Parties 26 at Glasgow, and they would be announcing their collaboration in order to ensure the conservation of the environment and to prevent climate change, which is very good to hear. And with regards to um, what could be discussed in the next session, well, the list of schools would be sent over uh, by uh, JPC to NGT and also the funding details with regards to the collaboration for the Happy Julia program. And along with that, the semantics of the different um, programs and the details of the same could be ironed out in the next session and more discussion could go into that. And along with that, I think there also needs to be a discussion with regards to the ecological tourism in Julia and the collaboration between you, the nature of the same. I think, um, yeah, George, is there anything that you would like to add? 
No. I would just like to add on a bit. I'm sorry, Georgia, to cut you off right there. But in regards to this um, ecological tourism, I would just like to add on a bit that uh, perhaps relating to the child labor, we could also have uh, this ecological tourism. It would create more jobs for the local people here in Jehula, and it would, again, prevent more child labor from happening. So, yeah, I would just like to clarify and also highlight on that part. And Georgia, I'm sorry, you were saying... No, um, that is uh, great. Um, we just wanted to summarize that. Um, that's um, adding on to the ecological tourism part. So we want to make sure that we're stimulating the local economy. So to summarize the entire mediation at hand, we've seen that we've come together and we've come up with um, really good conclu uh, excuse me, uh, initiatives to work together. And it seems that um, we've all come up with really uh, creative and really um, uplifting solutions in order to eradicate child poverty and in order to improve the situation that the people in Jehula live in. Not only um, the, um, to the benefit of um, FGT and um, JPC uh, as a whole uh, entities, but to the local communities as well to make sure that the these resources that are coming from the community are also improving upon their lives, not just being taken away. And what's really stimulating is that you all came to the table, are willing to work together and are willing to come together and find up, uh, come up with agreeable solutions that are able to work for both of you and are able to work for each other's interests. So we really thank you so much for uh, taking the time out, especially during this pandemic and especially that we have to come up online um, in different parts of the world, but we really appreciate you coming together. Um, and thank you so much again for this mediation. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, Sukrut, would you like to uh, add your conclusion, your concluding thoughts? Sorry, Perhaps, um, sorry to interject. Sorry to interject you, Sakrut. I would just like to confirm on our uh, last agenda. I would just like to offer in regards to uh, creating MOU together to create memorandum of understanding together with Oli and Lisa. So we would um, have a baseline for future agreement and for us to have a feasibility of the enactment of future agreement or engaging the project. Um, with that, I would like to ask Lisa, as the council, um, what do you think on that? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And um, you mentioned, I just to clarify all of the couple of documents before we wrap up. So we could definitely um, join together for the memor memorandum of understanding. You mentioned that you would send the list of schools to us after the mediation. And um, I asked for just, you know, a quick brief summary overview about the uh, semantics and fundings of actually getting the Happy Jehula program up and running. And if you could also do that in terms of the ecological tourism as well just so again we have something else to bring to our board and confirm this is exactly what we're doing and just to make it all clear and succinct would be great and just regarding as well the supervision supervision and oversight and the joint investigation we uh, as we mentioned we will go ahead and get the documents and the written confirmation from our suppliers um, for the joint investigation and maybe we could uh, join together and show you our regulations that we have implemented so far and come together and trying to work at even a new more stringent better set of regulations and we can lay out exactly how the supervi supervision and oversight is going to go ahead so if in a future session if we could lay all that out i would be happy to to work with you risa that's fantastic thank you so much for laying out um the these uh final concluding thoughts um so to make double check so we'll uh be making sure that all this paperwork is sent on uh, the memorandum of understanding is signed and uh, making sure that all of these legal technicalities are uh, put in the way to to make sure that these uh partnership continues on um safely and health uh healthy so uh we really thank you guys for thank you all for uh making sure that all of these uh are put uh together and put forward um, Sukrut, would you like to continue on? I think you summarized that uh, pretty well. So I think I just uh, I just like to thank all the parties for coming here today on the mediation table. I'm very happy that both the parties could collaborate uh, for the protection of the environment, which is the need of the hour. So thank you so much for being here today on a Sunday morning. And if there's any uh, parting thoughts from your side, uh, you're free to say it. Um, I'd just like to conclude by um, thanking Regina and Raisa for, for um, requesting this mediation. It's been really fruitful and I look forward to um, our future mediation sessions where we'll flesh out the details and actually 
um, hit the ground running and get working on these initiatives. Um, I'd like to say also that I look forward to seeing you in Glasgow in November. Hopefully it is in person, but if it's not, then I look forward to seeing you virtually. And hopefully at, in the near future, at some point, we can actually come down to Jehula and you know, be one of the first tourists in the ecological tourism um, campaign, uh, ecological tourism initiative. So I look forward to doing that as well. And thank you so much for being here, for having us. And I would echo my client's thoughts on that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you to the mediators for facilitating this. I feel like it was really productive and we have a lot to go on going forward. And I look forward to continuing this relationship. Perhaps I would like to add on what Ali have just mentioned as um, we would like to add the Glasgow in MOU if you would like. Um, and I would just like to say a thank you to the mediators. Thank you. Uh, Oli and Lisa on behalf of JPC and on behalf of uh, my client Regina. It's a really positive discussion today and um, with that I would like to pass the time back to the mediators for the formal end of our discussion. Thank you so much. I don't think there's anything else to say but thank you so much for being here today. And I'm looking forward to uh, future discussions. And I'm sure that in the future discussions, they would be as productive as this. And hopefully both the parties can reach a final solution over there and put an end to any kind of trouble in the past by signing the MOU. And yeah, looking forward to the future sessions. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much, everyone, for your well done. Well, uh, well done today. So time's up. But thank you so much for letting us mediate today.